Um, previously, we ran our Flutter application on a virtual device. In this video, we will build a Hello World application and also explore some common widgets in Flutter. To state again, the main.dat file is the entry point of our Flutter application. Inside the file is a familiar method, which is the main method. The main method is where our program starts and by convention, it is written inside the main.dat file. Please note that there should be just one main method in your Flutter application. Inside the main method is a new function, which is the run app function. The run app function takes in a widget as um, an argument, and it places this widget at the root of the widget tree. What are widgets? Widgets are high level objects used to describe parts of our application. In simpler words, widgets are the building blocks of a Flutter application's user interface, that is, what we can see. If you haven't heard, it is a great privilege to be the first to tell you that everything in Flutter is a widget. From texts, to buttons, images, alignments, and so on. There are so many widgets in Flutter. I personally do not know all the widgets available. Ideally, as you go, you get to cover more widgets. Regardless of how many widgets exist, widgets can be one of two types, either stateful or stateless. If a widget state can be modified during runtime, then it is considered a stateful widget, else the widget is stateless. Now let's clear out all that we have inside of the main.dat file. We're going to start from scratch in building our Hello World application. We pretty much just want to display the text Hello World on the screen. Now we see that the test file is broken. You see the red squiggly lines underneath the file. That is because the test file relies on the my app widget class that we just cleared out. So let's comment these lines um, to take out the error. We'll start out with a main method. So we're going to create our main method like so. And inside of the main method, we're going to call the run app function. It's run app parentheses, then um, semicolon. Notice the red squiggly lines underneath the run app text. That is because we need to import a library to be able to access this function. The library we're going to import is one of the auto-generated libraries that comes with the Flutter SDK, so we do not need to do anything extra. Android Studio helps us import files easily, so just click on the error text. You'd see a red bulb appear. Now we have the options to um, clear out the error. In this case, we want to import the material library. So when we import it like so, the squiggly lines under the um, run app function goes away. But the function still expects um, an argument of type widget. And at the moment, we have no widgets created. So we will just pass in the um, name that we intend to give our future um, widget, which in my case, I would like to name that widget Hello World App. And close it up with parentheses, like so. So to create a widget class, we start off with the class keyword, followed by the name of the class. Notice the naming convention. So classes follow the upper camel case style 
which every word starts with, um, every word starts capitalized, including the first. Um, so how you name your variables or classes in Flutter is important. Uh, we need to follow um, a particular coding style to help um, other developers who get to read our code read it easily. Variables follow the lower camel case style where every word starts with a capital letter except the first. And for classes, it's upper camel case. Every word is capitalized, including the first. Okay, back to our code. Um, we've given the class a name now. Now we're going to extend um, the super class, either a stateful class or a stateless class. In this case, we'll be extending a stateless widget class as we will be creating a static um, or immutable um, screen. We do not intend to carry out any stateful action. So let's put in stateless and we close it up with curly brackets. Next, we want to override a method implemented inside the superclass which in this case is the stateless widget. And that method is the build method. We override using the override keyword. Now we're overriding because we intend to make modifications to the initial implementation of the build method. So the build method does the heavy lifting in drawing up our widgets on the screen. It's expected to return a um, widget. So we're going to give it um, a type of widget. Then we'll call the method, which is build. And this method um, takes in an argument of build context. <clears throat> the build context refers to the position or location the widget is in the widget tree. The widget in this case is the Hello World app. Every widget in Flutter has a build context. Hence, in this case, the parent context of this class is this build um, context right here. And it can be accessed anywhere um, within the build method, that is inside of these two curly brackets. Now we're going to return a widget that displays the Hello World text on the screen. First, we start off with the um, return keyword. Then we're going to um, assign the widget, which in this case is the text widget. Close it up with a semicolon. The text widget takes in a string, and um, it also contains a lot of other properties that we can use to modify the text. So let's pass in the text, hello world. If we were to save all changes now, our app is going to break. That's because the text widget expects a text direction. That is how the text should be aligned on the screen. So we would call the text um, direction property. We would first of all separate the string hello world with a comma. Then would um, click on uh, the text direction property. And now we can either align our text from left to right or from right to left. In this case, we want to um, align our text from left to right. Before we save our changes uh, to view all that we've done on the device, Let's format our code. In Flutter, to format your code better, we get to leave um, trailing commas at the end of properties or widgets. So right click on your editor and then select reformat code. This should make your code look a lot more readable. Okay, to run our application now, we're going to perform a hot restart. This is because we've made a lot of changes to the main .dat file. We pretty much want to rebuild our application. So we click on hot restart now, and we get to see that the text is all the way at the top. We can barely even see the hello text. 
To prevent this from happening, we can um, give the text necessary space to avoid the top section of the screen. And to do that, we'll make use of another widget called the Safe Area widget. So Android Studio helps us easily wrap a widget with another widget. Developers love shortcuts. So to use the shortcuts, we'd click on the widget that we want to wrap. Then we'd see this bulb appear. We'll click on it and then select the option to wrap with widgets. In this case, we want to wrap the text widget with a safe area. So once we're done with that, we're going to click save. Okay, our very first red screen. We look at the error. The error says no media query widget found. The safe error widget calculates the width and height of the current device, and it gives the child widgets the necessary space it needs to avoid the very top of the device. To access the height or width of the current device, we need to use a material app. A material app is an application that uses material design. It gives us access to material design specific functionality and also properties like a navigator, which helps us in navigating through our Flutter application. We also have access to media query themes and so much more. So we would carry out the same process of wrapping um, an existing widget with another widget by clicking on this bulb and then select wrap with widget. In this case, we want to wrap it in a material app. The material app doesn't have a child property but a home property. The widget given to the home property is the first widget that gets displayed or drawn on the screen. So let's save this now. And we see that our error or the red screen goes away. Our application isn't the prettiest at the moment, but our text definitely isn't at the very top of our um, device all thanks to the safe area widget. To make our app look a little bit better, we could um, wrap the safe area widget with yet another widget, in this case, a scaffold. The scaffold widget helps us to go deeper into the material design layout structure. It also makes available to us widgets like the app bar, button navigation bar, floating action button, and a lot more. So let's wrap the safe area widget now with a scaffold. The scaffold too doesn't have a child property, but a body property, which is the primary content of the scaffold. So let's change that to body. And now we'll save. See that our app looks a lot better. The scaffold takes up the full height and width of the device, as we can see right here. Now, before we conclude this video, let's make the Hello World text to sit at the middle or the center of the screen. To achieve this, we would wrap the text widget with yet another widget called Center. So we'll carry out the same process of wrapping a widget to so click on the bulb. And in this case, we already have the option to wrap with center. So we'll click on wrap with center. Then we'll save. Yay, we have just concluded the first part of the Hello World application. In the next video, we'll explore some other common widgets and build out our screen a little bit.